Hi, everyone. This lesson is on the adverse effects of corticosteroids on the cardiovascular system, the gastrointestinal system, and we'll even discuss some adverse effects on the eyes and even on psychiatric health. So before we talk about those particular health consequences of corticosteroid use, let's discuss what corticosteroids are and how they work. So corticosteroids are going to be medications like prednisone and methylprednisolone. They mimic endogenous corticosteroids or glucocorticoids. So endogenous meaning that we create our own and these come in the form of hormones like cortisol. So even in our body, cortisol has anti-inflammatory effects. But when we take them in the form of prednisone, for instance, we're going to take them at higher doses and we're going to use them for their anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory functions. So we use them to treat conditions like giant cell arteritis. We use them to treat autoimmune diseases. So we can use them for flare-ups of rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, for instance. And the side effects we're going to discuss in this lesson are going to be from systemic use. So we're going to discuss the effects of corticosteroids like prednisone on the stomach, on the kidneys, and even on the brain in this lesson. And as we will see, prednisone causes a variety of mild and or severe side effects, and that's why we are going to use them sparingly when we use them systemically. So if we're taking them by mouth or we're using IV corticosteroids, we're going to use them sparingly, again, only for flare-ups, generally speaking. And oftentimes, you don't want to do it for too long of a period of time. That's often when we're going to have a lot of these side effects as well with long-term use. So the first system we're going to discuss in this lesson is the cardiovascular system. So corticosteroid use can lead to hypertension. It's more likely to be something that's going to be seen in patients taking corticosteroids. So hypertension is going to be a high blood pressure. Usually we're going to define it as greater than 140 over 90. And it's going to be due to specifically corticosteroid induced salt retention. And corticosteroids lead to salt retention by their action on the kidneys. So having especially higher levels of corticosteroids for longer periods of time can lead to more salt retention in the kidneys, and this can lead to hypertension, but not only hypertension, it can also lead to edema as well, and edema is going to be swelling. So it's often going to be swelling of the extremities, and again, this is due to salt retention. So we can get swelling, swelling in the legs, oftentimes that's going to be the place we're going to see it, although we can see it in other places in the body as well. We can also see arrhythmias with corticosteroid use as well. So again, this is going to be with higher doses and longer durations, and particular arrhythmias that we can see include SVT or supraventricular tachycardia. We can see VT or ventricular tachycardia, and we can also see AFib. We can also see in other patients bradycardia, so a lower heart rate below 60. So we can see that in some cases as well. Premature atherosclerosis is something that we can note in patients who are taking long-term systemic corticosteroids. So the premature atherosclerosis is likely going to be due to a combination of factors, including hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, which we can see in corticosteroid use patients, and also hyperglycemia. So corticosteroid in the form of systemic treatments can lead to some of these findings, some of these issues. So they can have a lot of metabolic effects, and this is going to lead to an increased risk of premature atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis is going to be where we get plaque formation in the blood vessels, especially those in the heart. Now, moving on to the gastrointestinal system, we can see issues with gastritis. So gastritis is going to be inflammation of the stomach. Itis means inflammation. And steroids are going to do this by reducing the protective mechanism of the gastric mucosa. So the inside of the stomach, the gastric mucosa, has a lot of very important protective mechanisms because of the very acidic contents in the stomach. However, medications like corticosteroids, although we can also see it in other medications like non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, for instance, the mucosa can be affected. Its ability to be or to lead to protection can be impaired. And this can lead to a more likely effect of that acidic gastric content to damage the underlying mucosa, leading to gastritis or an inflammation of the stomach. And ultimately, we can lead to gastric ulcers. So this is ulceration of that inner lining of the stomach, the gastric mucosa. Again, this is due to reduction in protective mechanisms of the gastric mucosa. Other possibilities are that the corticosteroids themselves are increasing the gastric acid release. So that can also be something that could be potentially the reason for some of these findings. And in 
other cases, we may see that this doesn't occur at all. I guess it's probably going to be dependent on the dose that is taken, but these are some important conditions to look out for, especially on higher doses of systemic corticosteroids and especially longer term. So gastritis, if you have gastritis, you can have nausea, vomiting, upper abdominal pain, those types of symptoms. And with gastric ulcers, you can have similar symptoms, plus you may have some melina or black, tarry, smelly stool because of that, some bleeding that may occur from the gastric ulcer, which is then digested. And then we see a very black, tarry, smelly stool, which is called, again, melina. And moving on to corticosteroids effects on the eyes. So we can see increased risk of cataracts with corticosteroid use. It's going to be a very important cause of cataracts. And it's likely going to be due to protein changes within the lens of the eye. And more specifically with regards to corticosteroid use, we have a higher risk of a particular type of cataract, and that is posterior subcapsular cataracts. And with regards to these particular types of cataracts, patients can often describe symptoms like glares or halos. So that's going to be a more specific finding with regards to these types of cataracts. And the pathophysiology as to why this occurs is not entirely understood. We can also see exophthalmos with corticosteroid use. Again, this is going to be more longer term use. Exophthalmos is going to be where there's outward protrusion of the eye. So there's bulging eyes. And again, it's with higher doses, longer periods of time. And then moving on to psychiatric effects of corticosteroids. So we can see psychosis in patients who are taking corticosteroids, especially very, very high doses. And the psychosis in corticosteroid use can involve hallucinations, can involve delusions. So it can be a definition of psychosis. We can also see altered sensorium. So their senses can be distorted or altered. Again, this is going to be with very high doses of corticosteroids. So we often will see this with pulse steroid use. So pulse steroid use is where there's a particular autoimmune condition. For instance, some kidney conditions may require pulse steroid therapy. And when you use these pulse steroids, it's a very, very high dose. And when you give this dose, patients can become very either disoriented, have hallucinations, delusions, those types of symptoms. So again, it's going to be very, very high doses, generally speaking. And we can also see memory issues with corticosteroid use. So what will happen is that if patients take steroids for long periods of time, again, if they're taking them systemically long periods of time, they can have memory issues. And what will happen is their memory can reduce over time. They can have issues with short-term memory, long-term memory. And this is likely due to hippocampal dysfunction. So the hippocampus is involved in consolidating memories. And what we will see is that over time, the hippocampus and some parts of the prefrontal cortex can become atrophied due to increased corticosteroid use. This can occur even with high levels of cortisol. So if patients or people have high stress for long, long periods of time, it can actually damage the hippocampus. So that can be also something we can see in patients not even taking steroid medications. In long term, some patients can also develop what we call steroid dementia syndrome. And then we can also see issues with mood disorders in patients on corticosteroids. So Patients who are on steroids are more likely to have depression and anxiety, especially higher doses, longer term use. And it's likely an effect on the serotonin system. So there's serotonergic dysregulation. There's changes in how serotonergic neurons are functioning. So we can have too low of serotonin being released or other issues with serotonin. Please also check out my lesson on adverse effects of gabapentin and also consider joining as a member to see members only content. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you next time.